Mercedes is seemingly back on top, even though they faced a disappointing result at Spa following the disqualification of George Russell, who won the race. But even with this factor in mind, the Silver Arrows now have a competitive car. One that even the aerodynamically profound Red Bull found hard to overtake, let alone match in terms of pure race pace. The team has managed to win three of the last four races, and the team doesn't plan to stop here, as later statements made by Hamilton and Wolff indicate that the W15 will be even more competitive after the summer break. But with the team reverting upgrade specifications mid-weekend at Spa, can Mercedes realistically keep up with the competition in the following races? Mercedes definitely are back on track as the team has won its third race of the season. Even though a glamorous 1-2 result was stripped from the team following the results of post-race checks, without which the Silver Arrows would have made a considerable dent in the Constructors' Championship. However, achieving the race win after starting P3 and P6 on the grid on a track which has favoured the Red Bull's car for the past couple of seasons is a massive statement made by Mercedes. And it is a position the team themselves have worked quite hard for quite some time to get to. Lewis Hamilton feels what Mercedes has done in recent races in terms of developing the W15 is definitely something worth praising. And while his 105th win at Spa was one which he inherited from his teammate, Hamilton was the fastest car on track under the two-stop strategy, providing him the opportunity to benefit from Russell's disqualification, and the Brit took away the positives the Belgian GP had offered himself and his team towards the remainder of the 2024 season. This season has 11 more races to go, and that is definitely more than enough to cause a major shakeup in the Constructors' Championship. Even though Hamilton, without hesitation, ruled out the possibilities of making a move for the Drivers' Championship this season, if he maintains his current form of podium finishes, he has every chance of making some noise for a spot in the top three. Talking about the Belgian Grand Prix as well as Mercedes' future, Hamilton was really positive about the future and how the W15 is currently feeling. As the seven-time world champion went on to say, I feel for George, and you don't want to win a race through a disqualification, but we've been back in the fight for victories in the past few races. It is incredibly competitive now, so we will need to work hard to battle for wins more consistently. Nevertheless, we can get into the summer break with momentum and positivity. While the result from the Belgian Grand Prix is positive for Mercedes, the weekend was not smooth sailing for the Silver Arrows. The team pushed the W15 at Spa, introducing a significant upgrade package, new designs of the underfloor and diffuser to create additional load on the front of the floor and increase the diffuser effectiveness. The aim of this upgrade package was to basically add downforce, but there were warning signs during the Friday practice sessions as both Hamilton and Russell were a second off the pace with signs of problematic bouncing and balance issues. Therefore, Mercedes opted to remove the floor and some accompanying aero parts to give itself a known baseline to work with for the rest of the weekend, especially as rain was forecasted for both practice and qualifying on Saturday. The changes seem to have helped Hamilton and Russell during qualifying, as both Brits managed to qualify P3 and P6. Although Hamilton felt that the qualifying opportunity came largely due to the rain, his performance in Sunday's race indicated that the change of aero specs and some other setup changes did put the W15 in its optimal performance window. This raised an important question as to whether the upgrades were actually the cause of Mercedes' Friday problems. Coming out of the weekend, both Wolf and Russell talked about this and both unanimously agreed that the upgrades had nothing to do with the team's Friday difficulties, declaring the upgrades are working as expected and revealed an under-the-radar mechanical adjustment they went with was the cause for the performance disturbance. Wolf revealed that the new floor and diffuser, therefore, will be brought to Zandvoort after the summer break, as the Austrian team principal went on to say, I don't think the new floor was bad. On the contrary, we know that we did a few things wrong. We changed that on the car and rebuilt it. And then the driver said it was much better. We think it was more of a mechanical thing where we messed up. The Belgian GP upgrades as we know it were crucial for the team in unlocking significant performance going into the summer. And to see the upgraded W15 bounce and struggle with balance issues would have set off some alarm bells back at Brackley. But overnight work, finding a mechanical solution means two things. One, the Mercedes simulator data is correlating much better with track data. Second is the fact that the W15's brand new mechanical platform seems to have a higher performance ceiling than its predecessors and it seems to be that Mercedes have identified the peaks of its current mechanical platform, so they are able to work around adding performance accordingly, something which clearly Ferrari has struggled to do with the SF24. 
Therefore, the Belgian race weekend does not suggest that a good streak of effective upgrades from Mercedes has ended, similar to Ferrari's current situation. On the contrary, the race result has reaffirmed how competitive the W15 already is without the upgrades and how monumental of a turnaround Mercedes has made in 2024. Toto Wolff and James Allison are both equally excited about the team's trajectory in 2024, as both of them believe that Mercedes are in the driving seat to become once more the top force of Formula 1. And the plan to do it is by forcing themselves to the front, by making the moves first in the developments race to potentially catch rival teams off guard. Back at Brackley, the team is living up to this promise as the team has worked on an upgrade detail different to that of every other top F1 team, such as McLaren and Red Bull. Mercedes, according to Allison, are taking the game by milliseconds and tenths of a second, rather than aiming at three or five tenths at a time. That has brought Mercedes close to the front, and Allison revealed recently that this is his approach to remain dominant for the years to come. And when talking about upgrades, Allison went on to say, Our challenge is just to keep those upgrades arriving at a pace that the others cannot keep up with. In doing that, we are just bullying our car to the front by virtue of the effort made by everybody here in the factory over the coming weeks and months. The one question Mercedes will be eager to answer during the break is, how did George get disqualified at the Belgian GP? Post-race checks made by the FIA revealed that his dry W15 was 1.5 kilograms under the minimum weight limit of 798 kilograms, while Hamilton's Mercedes was right on the weight limit. There seems to be no proper explanation for this difference yet, but Wolf and several other analysts and pundits have suggested that the one-stop strategy could have been the reason. A mistake has happened, said Wolf. I think it's a one-stop that you expect lots of rubber, maybe more to fall off the tires. There's no excuse. If the stewards deem it to be a breach of regulations, then it is what it is. We have to learn from that. A clear explanation there is required from the team as this is the team's second DNF in two consecutive years, unlike Mercedes to be making such errors. It remains to be seen exactly how Mercedes will perform post-summer break. The current trajectory seems to be positive for the Silver Arrows, and with the Spa upgrades being brought to Zandvoort, and with possibly more to come in the 2025 season in mind, what do you guys think? How much more progress can Mercedes make with the W15? How much progress can Mercedes make in both championships this season? We are very much into your thoughts and perspectives in the comments section down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourselves up to date about the 2024 Formula 1 season.